Welcome back to a new video. In this tutorial, we shall be writing the code for snake and ladder game in Python. So you would be familiar with how snake and ladder game works, the functionality of it. So let's get started. We'll make use of the concept of list in this program to a great extent. So I've initialized an empty list to the variable L. And now we need to call the function and pass the parameter L. But to do that, we need to define a function called bold. So I will just go ahead and do that. Okay. And here we'll take turn is equal to 2. I'll let you know why the name of the variable can be anything. But why it's 2, I'll let you know. And we'll take a loop, for loop, for i in range of 0 till 100. It won't take the 100th value, it will take till 99. So 0 till 99, still we get 100 values. So when we come inside that loop, we will make use of the list and we will insert. So the first value in the insert function would be the position, the value of the position, so that is i, that is the 0th position. So the snake and ladder board starts with 1 so 0 plus 1 is 1 i is 0 so i plus 1 is 1 and next for j in range of 99 that is the last and the greatest value of the board and minus 1 as i told you before the loop will range from 99 till 0 minus 1 plus 1 is 0 and we will decrement j by 10. After each iteration, j should get decremented by 10. So here we are just trying to construct the board for a snake and ladder game today. So see here, I have initialized turn to 2. So if turn modulus 2 is equal to 0, that is if it's an even row, if the row number is even, then we are going to print the board it's very simple you don't have to write each and every number to display the board you can use loops to do this and you can reduce the lines of code pretty easily so we have l that's the name of the list l of j okay so 99 so 99 will be printed how 99 will be printed l dot insert so when this becomes for example when i becomes 99 so in the place of 99, 100 will be there. So that is 100 will be printed over here. 100, comma, and then we need to display a pipe. Okay. And then we are going to decrement it by 1. L of J minus 1. And similarly, we will give another pipe. So I will continue this all the way till J minus 9. Okay. And now we shall print a border so this is just a trial and error for the border i'm just randomly giving it okay let's keep it that way now look here turn is 2 2 modulus 2 is even turn is even so it comes inside this but we need to update the value of turn turn minus is equal to 1 why minus is equal to 1 because we want turn to become odd when it's even it should become odd when it's odd it should become even so when this becomes odd it comes to the else part over here so let me just give this here turn plus is equal to one so that it becomes even again this is to print the even and odd rows and to maintain the uniformity i will copy this and paste it over here and the same way i will start from this and reverse this and i will print it over here just the reverse of this will be printed over here. Okay, so now we've printed this and let's run the program. Look at that. There we go. We have it. Maybe we have to reduce this. We'll take care of that later. But look at that. The reason I used odd and even concept over here is because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If 10 is here, 11 would come here if I wouldn't have used the odd and even concept. Since I've used that, so after 10, immediately above that, we have 11. Then it goes up till 20, 20, 21. Otherwise, 21 would start in the place of 30, which is not desirable. So we've got the board. 
okay so now we need to have some conditions for the game have another function defined and let us call that ladder and snake you can give any name any meaningful name that is comfortable for you and now we will print the places where there are ladders this is to show the players that where the ladders are situated and where the snakes are there so it is from 3 to 24 in my program and similarly we'll go ahead and print the location where the snakes are present now if you observe here in ladders the right side the number on the right is greater than the number on the left whereas in snakes when we print the snakes the number on the left is greater than that on the right in everything player lands on third position he goes to the 24th position when the player lands on the 14th position he goes to the 42nd position whereas in snakes if the player is on 95 which is very close to winning the player will come down to 18 sounds interesting so we need to call the function so we have it over here and so we need to implement this so for that we'll take another function so we'll say climb okay so let's give in the conditions so if x is equal to 3 then x becomes 24 that is the player goes to 24th position so similarly i'll provide all the conditions so that it helps us to achieve an accurate game and now we shall say return he will give the argument as x so it will return that argument in the form of x so just when we climb the ladder if we encounter a snake in the game we come down so for that we will define another function called fall fall of y so, so the argument is y so i'll be providing all the conditions over here and now we will return y but we'll not be calling this functions climb and fall in the driver code and we'll have another function so we are making use of this function to accept so we'll say accept from user so there will be two moves since there are two players so move one and move two so now we will import random when we roll the dice there is only possibility of getting a number from one to six so we'll initialize dice again in the form of a list one two three four five and six okay so now we'll take another variable input which is a keyword so we'll take the name of the player one so we've given the customized message so we need to take another variable i'll take it as wh so this will take an input of the name of the second player so we need to ask the user who's going to play first whether player one is going to start the game or player two so we'll take who that's just a variable name is equal to int why int because i want the input in the form of one and two it should be either one or two player one or player two input again the keyword okay and now we'll employ a while loop so we'll take while so the chance imagining that every time the die is going to give you one for both the players the maximum number of times that the players can move on the board is 100 so maximum is 100 every time if the die turns up to be 6 then the game might be in the favor of the person who is getting 6 every time so we'll say move 1 less than or equal to 100 and move 2 that is the move of the second player is less than or equal to 100 so we'll go inside the while loop so we'll say if supposing just assume i and you are playing supposing you want to start the game you enter one that is you you are going to start the game and i am the second player so i will start after you so if who is equal to one that is if you are starting the game you the person who's watching this video is starting the game then we'll declare another variable as chance one is equal to again int 
take the input using the input keyword and we'll specify the turn of the player and we'll specify the name of the player like whose turn it is if it's my turn it will display my name if it's your turn it will display your name so i'll use the format method so every time the player should enter one to roll the die whether it's player one or player two irrespective of that it should be one okay dot format so format in the zeroth position what should be printed any idea yeah if the player is one so if you are the player you are going to start the game it is captured in this one why right? it's the name of the player one which is getting captured in this variable so i will enter that now we'll take another if a nested if so here we'll validate whether the player has entered one only one and not two or zero or something else so we'll validate that here so chance one if chance one is equal to one only then he can proceed the game so here we'll take another variable player one random we have imported random choice of dice what do i mean by this well dice is ranging from one to six so random number can come from the three might come let's assume three is going to come three is going to appear then the move will increase supposing three has appeared then we have to increase move by the number which has appeared so what is the number that has appeared that is in player one so we'll say move one plus is equal to player one this is as good as typing move one is equal to move one plus player one it's just a shorthand operator and now we need to print and let the player know what is his current position on the board we'll take the name of the player is at position one not a position one that is just a format now we'll specify it so who in this variable the name of the player is stored and how much he has moved comma move one because we're still dealing with player one remember this happens only if chance is equal to one if the player has entered one but before that let's mention the message so before climbing what was the position so we'll specify it here that is nothing but move one move one is equal to we're going to call the function remember i told we're now going to call that function in the driver code yes we're calling that function in this function move one and next we'll go ahead and even call the fall function fall of move one so we'll be printing the position after falling so we'll say after fall and it's going to be move one so we'll display this message again after falling so that the player is aware of the position in the game this is a code when we assume that the player has entered one now what if the player entered something else apart from one so we'll say else no need to specify any condition just say else because apart from one can be anything and we need to give the message to the user that he has to enter one enter one two proceed okay so just the same way over here when turn was even we made it odd when it was odd when it came to else we made it even again it went back here and it displayed so the same manner now who is one starting that is you have started now it has to be my turn how do i make it my turn by just incrementing it not inside the else part but just neglect this part when you're doing this and we will do it over here so who plus is equal to one who is equal to who plus one that will be two okay so now when it becomes two we need some code for that right so we'll take the else just give else okay so we'll just copy paste this but we need to make some modifications so we're gonna say chance two okay that's going to be the same and here it's going to be wh because the name is going to be different 
If chance 2, if the player 2 enters 1, fine, well and then, we'll get a random number from the dice, then move 2, and here the most important thing is to make it odd. So 1 is odd, we made it 2, it came here to the else when the condition was checked because this is a while loop, it will go through many iterations until the condition becomes false. So here we need to give minus to make it odd. But in Python we have another feature which is one of my favorite. While can have else, just the way if can have else or for can have else, even while can have else. So what if move is not lesser than 100? What if move is greater than 100? Move 1, player 1 has exceeded 100. Then player 1 is the winner. So we'll say if move 1 is greater than move 2. What does this mean to say? So at one point this while loop will become false. Then it will come over here and decide the winner. If move 1, that is if you who are watching this video, let us say you are you're at the position 100 and I am at the position 98, then you are the winner. So let's go ahead and print that. You can give a message over here to congratulate the winner. Remember, this double O has stored the name of player 1. So we are going to use that. What if I am the winner? So it will be else. So just copy that and paste over here. And make sure that you give the right name of the variable so that the name is accurate and to avoid confusion. And now we need to call that function over here in the driver code. So we are going to initialize move1 over here as 1, that is play1 and move2 also as 1. Why? Why move1 and move2 are equal to 1? Why not move2 equal to 2? Because we never know who is going to start the game. It might be move1, that is a player1 who is going to start the game or player2. But both of them, irrespective of who is going to start, they have to start from 1. That is the reason I have given 1 here. So now it's time to run the code and play the game. And let's see if there are no errors. Okay, so enter the player name. Okay, so let us assume that you are A and I am B. Let us say you are going to start the game. That's so 1. So A is starting the game. Enter 1 to roll the die. I will enter 2. Let's see what's going to happen. It will say enter 1 to proceed. The turn of A is gone because it was a mistake by giving the input 2. So it's my turn now. And I will say 1. I will utilize this opportunity and say 1. Look at that. I'm at position 5. So it will ask A to enter again. I will say 1. So I will just continue the game and we'll see. At the end, who is going to win? Okay, so I am at position 98 and it's the turn of A. It's very close. Look at that. It's at 102. That is what I mentioned here. I'll show you the code and explain it to you. So B is at 102. 102 is definitely greater than 100. So B is the winner and the game is done. That is what that is the condition we checked here to verify. So I am B here. Okay, so B 102 is great. So it gave me this. That is player 2. That is B. Player 1 was A. So with this, I conclude this video. I hope you have liked it. I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial. And do subscribe to the channel for more. Give this video a big like and share it with your friends and your network. Thanks for watching and bye for now.